Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to already our 10th season of Chemcom TV's News Bulletin. We are all very happy that we can finally meet live again in London and share news and information from Chemcom Europe 2022 with you. Also in this series of Chemcom TV's News Bulletin, you can expect interviews with authority and industry experts. Today we start with two experts discussing grouping approaches as an effective chemicals management tool for both authorities and industry. As of tomorrow, sound right from the sessions and every day a statement of the day and a forecast for the day. And as always, a local reporter with informative stories. With more than 800 days since Philadelphia, we had plenty of time to find our local reporter. So we organized a pub quiz to find the most knowledgeable and passionate person to show us London. There are two candidates left and we go live to the Rose Pub for the grand finale with Francesca Cunanan Hi. and Adris Askar. Hello. Are you both ready? As you know, the winner takes it all. Abba. Abba. The winner, winner takes, takes it all. The, the loser standing small. Besides a victory, that's our destiny. Correct, but that was not a question yet. First question. In which London railway station can you find platform 9 and 3 quarters from Harry Potter? King's Cross Great Station. Quotation. Wow, did you both drink a memory potion? Next question. The London Eye has a capsule for each borough of London. How many capsules does it have? 32. Spot on. If Big Ben is the bell, What's the name of the tower? Elizabeth, Elizabeth tower. tower. Correct. How many ravens are there in the Tower of London? Nine. Nine. Exact. Now a difficult question. Westminster Bridge is painted green. To mimic the color of what? The benches in the, the House of Commons. Commons. Precise. At which London studio did the Beatles record? Abbey, Abbey Road. Road. And what was the first track on the Abbey Road album? Come together, right now, over me. <laughs> right, now the final question. Who lived in London at 36 Craven Street? Benjamin Franklin. Amazing. I'm flabbergasted. Benjamin Franklin was our last Chemcon TV local reporter. And you both earned it to Follow in his footsteps. We wow, are <laughs> the champions, my, my friends. Friend. Congratulations. Here is your first assignment. See you later in this bulletin. All these songs, nice. Also a merry tune was played by the Pied Piper on the cartoon in relation to grouping approaches as an effective chemicals management tool for both authorities and industry. The concept of grouping is appealing for both authorities and industry but in the implementation there might be a snack. What is the price we pay for this? I think grouping is quite important uh, to be more effective and efficient and uh, gain also a lot of time. But of course uh, when we do this we also have to be very transparent and guide uh, industry with it to come uh, with the right chemistry for the future. And I think this is really a process we have to, um, to do now because we also need chemistry uh, yeah, for the climate change, that's very clear. So uh, to do this in the right way, um, I think the grouping will be a very effective tool for that. Okay, and Paul, what is your positive note at the end? Looking at these groups holistically, you know, at the chemical universe, as we call it, has allowed us to really pick out, you know, like I said earlier, the most impactful things and work on the right substances at the right time, uh, which helps with substitution, for example, but also ultimately delivers on the goals that we have to protect human health and the environment. Please watch the highlights of the interview I had with Karim and Paul. The complete interview can be viewed at our website and YouTube channel. Or just press the CCTV button in our renewed ChemConnect app. The interview on grouping with all the bats in a cartoon somehow reminds me of COVID. So time for a moment of reflection. Since our last event, ChemCon the Americas 2020 in Philadelphia, COVID has rocked our world and we are very happy to be live again here in London. We have sent our local reporters to the National COVID Memorial Wall. Each heart on this wall represents a person who was loved and died since March 2020 due to COVID-19. In Shakespeare style, I asked our reporters, let's call them Romeo and Juliet, to visit the Memorial Wall. What's this? A cup closed in my true love's hands. Poison, I see. Hath been his timeless end. Oh child, drunk all and left no friendly drop.
to help me after. And cut! We do not want a Shakespeare tragic ending. I really like the current West End production called And Juliet, where Shakespeare's wife suggests changing the ending. She is wondering what would have happened if Juliet did not kill herself. Hence an intriguing what-if scenario for the most famous love story of all time. It is told through some of the most iconic pop anthems and shows us that even after a tragedy, Covid in our time, we need to move forward, seize the day and make life count. So do not forget, anything can happen if you let it. Isn't that the song from Mary Poppins? <laughs> anything can happen if you let it. Sometimes things are difficult, but you can bet it doesn't have to be so. Changes can be made. You can move a mountain if you use a larger speed. Anything can happen if you let it. Yes, you bet it. Time for the statement of the day. With us in our CCTV studio, Patience Brown from the OECD. Welcome, Patience. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. Patience, can you tell us about the new developments in the area of chemical grouping at the OECD? Sure. We actually have a number of projects going on right now. We're currently updating the guidance document for grouping and read across. And we're integrating a lot of the information we've learned from an innovative project we have going on for the last seven years, in fact, called the Integrated Approaches to Testing and Assessment Case Studies Project. This project really uses some of the most state-of-the-art science behind supporting groups and, in fact, not only structure-function relationships, but things like mechanistic information, pathway-based data, and some omics approaches as well. So we're very excited about this. And your statement is? Grouping is a useful tool for chemical safety decisions. Thank you very much for your statement. I'm sure it will be discussed in today's seminar on data-driven regulatory approaches and directions, which brings me to today's forecast. This morning we will start with a workshop on REIT registration IT tools, followed by a seminar on UK REIT implementation aspects, food contact and cosmetics, both UK as well as global, before looking at the data-driven regulatory roadmap with, among others, the one substance, one assessment approach. And after that we take a road trip including suggestions how industry can manage chemical regulatory risks and how to communicate regulatory information throughout your business. With 10 hours absorbing and sharing information and experiences, it's time to relax during our welcome reception. So thank you for watching and for those here in London, looking forward to seeing you tonight.